Spurs 3, Brentford 1. It'd be fun if Brentford score in the first minute of every game now <laughs> uh, for the well, rest of the season. It's not doing them too many favours. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's probably time they, they stopped. Um, yeah, I mean, it was some finish from Mbuma, wasn't it? Uh, but I think... And I'm obviously biased, but I think Spurs really deserved it. I mean, their XG was about a million or something. It was almost, uh, well, it was almost four. So I have exaggerated there, but quite a lot. But I think they deserved it. Uh, Madison was brilliant. There was one moment where he sort of spun out of about four challenges and set Son away. They didn't score from that. But I just thought it's quite interesting that he's playing slightly deeper and he's such a wonderful player and just such, got such a lovely touch. So uh, I was delighted with his performance. Vicario is obviously sort of odd in that he made some amazing one brilliant save but I'm not quite sure shady header yeah but when he was just sort of like flapping at the ball when he's like in the centre circle it seemed silly and it seems ridiculous that VAR can't intervene because it's not a goal scoring opportunity does that mean that wouldn't be a red I mean I don't I I should know the laws that if they penalised him it would have just been a yellow because you know Boma wasn't just there ready to put it in Uh. I don't think it would have been a red, but I, I do find it quite funny that he, he clearly handled the ball outside the area and the only people who did get punished were Thomas Frank and Christopher <laughs> Iyer, <laughs> who play, play for and manage Brentford. Um, yeah, so that seems a little unfair, but there you go. Um, I I think... It's actually, on that, sorry, well. on that, on, well, sorry, on that, I, I really think, actually... If it's immediate dissent and it turns out the decision was wrong, even if VAR can't change it, you should be able to say, come on. Like Chris Ryan should be able to say, come on. Vicario was in our half, like <laughs> bouncing the ball like it was John Stockton. Like surely like he, we are allowed to be annoyed that you didn't spot that. I think that would be fair if they were, if him and Thomas Frank had their yellow cards rescinded, I believe. Yeah, I, was, I don't feel that strongly about it. Um, Brendan Johnson, his reaction to scoring was quite interesting. Actually, he's been getting a lot of grief from some Tottenham fans. I think mainly, I don't know if it's in the stadium, but certainly online, to such an extent that he felt compelled to deactivate his uh, Instagram account. Then he scored in the Carabao Cup during the week when Spurs were quite lucky to squeak past Coventry City. He scored the the winner in added time and more or less had to be shoved forward to celebrate or to take the applause from the travelling Spurs fans at the end of that game. Yesterday he scored in in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and barely celebrated, just put his finger to his lips, you know, clearly a sign to his those who are maligning him. But... Uh, they will probably think now, oh, I see, we, we've given him abuse and he's upped his game, so we were in the right, and uh, it is slightly nauseating. But um, fair play to him, because you know he's he's quite young and it can't be easy when you're getting all that criticism. Yeah, and he's a very talented footballer, and you know we were talking about Triori's end products. Yes, it could be better for Brennan Johnson, but, you know, he... Like he's so direct, and I think that really that does really help how Tottenham play, uh, and it helps how they press. And like two of their goals were from you know uh, capitalising on Brentford misplacing passes and being so like like on it at the press. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so look, well done Tottenham. Um, it was a pressure game for them, right? They really needed to win that game, and they did. Uh, Liverpool three, Bournemouth nil. What did you make of this one? I thought it was a very straightforward win for, for Liverpool, despite an early scare where um, Semenyo, I think, had the, the early goal ruled yep. out for offside. But then it was just one-way traffic the whole way, wasn't it? And it could have been a lot more than three, really. Uh, Bournemouth, I believe, had 19 shots on goal in this game. Oh. I think match of the day only showed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, and that's the one that was ruled out for offside. Which much, which does that even count as a shot on goal? If it was oh no, they showed like Kelleher made that good save, didn't he? I think they they hit the bar or something, and it came out hit Trent Alexander Arnold, and then Kelleher made a really good save, uh, pushing it away. I mean, that's not a, a Bournemouth shot, I guess, but it feels like an attempt on goal. They were there or thereabouts when Trent was doing that. I mean, Kepa had a good game, but I don't know what he's for that first goal because you know that was like it. 
you could say that they, when people are trying to look at how Slot plays it slightly differently, it is a slower build up. But like a couple of their goals were just, well, the first one was just Hoyer upfield. And it was a good run from Diaz. But if Kepa doesn't come, he's not scoring. And it's just a mad, I mean, it's hard being a goalkeeper. I appreciate that. But don't come hard, just into no man's land. Um, and Darwin Nunes finishes, you know, that is a joy. That is a joyful thing, isn't it? Um, and I think we are contractually obliged between us to say, he makes the hard things look easy and the easy things look hard or something like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, he uh, uh, he did very well and I'm pleased for him. Um, do you think if we go to uh, Selhurst Park, I feel like that's one of the best performances I've seen from an Eric Ten Hag Manchester United team and they still didn't win. I don't know what that says. Yeah, he does get a lot of grief. I, I'm a big critic of Eric Ten Hag's, uh, but I think... <laughs> At some point, the players have to take responsibility. <laughs> they had more than enough chances to win that game. Uh, they didn't take them. They could have lost it, but Palace yeah. didn't take their chances, and a draw was probably fair enough. But, yeah, uh, yeah Eric Ten Hag, if he had here, I'd imagine he would be pulling it out because, you know, just score. Give me a break, lads. Come yeah, on. I totally agree. Just they had so many chances, didn't they? I mean, but that Anana double save is amazing. I was just thinking about that, and I think we mentioned it the other day when other keepers did it, and Reyes in midweek uh, 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 in Bergamo. It is not fair on middle-aged men to watch younger men be able to dive and then get up so quickly and dive again. It just, you know, like, there are lots of things in life that make you realise, you know, you've got less time left. Oh, I'm 45. Maybe I've got the same amount of time left. I don't know. But, you know, not as many good years left. And when I see people, people jump and get up very quickly, I'm generally annoyed that they've done it. Well, just any sort of agility at all annoys me. <laughs> like I said earlier, I was I was at Dulwich Hamlet yesterday and I was sitting in the stand and uh, at half time I went to go to the, the gents and there were two old blokes sitting at the end of the row. So I was third seat in. Now, I could have just thrown my leg over the back of my seat and walked out the end of that aisle without disturbing the two blokes. But I just looked at it, sort of lifted my leg, and they went, nah, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to ask them to, to let me out. And obviously they didn't mind, but uh, I even mentioned it to them. Look, I was going to go over the top here, but I'm, I, I don't have the agility anymore. And uh, one of them sort of thinking, you know, wait till you get to our age, mate. <laughs> um, less than what Everton won? Uh, the, it, it was so wet. I mean, it sounded like the rain was all falling on the stadium, the studio, the, like the microphones in the stadium. It was like you're watching the game and it's just. Um, and uh, the only note I have of note is I really like it when Ndidi and Mavadidi are passing the ball to each other. <laughs> There's just something lovely about it. Uh, they had one little move where they kept passing it to each other. And I was like, this is really nice. Um, and obviously, I thought Everton scored too early. Um, and I don't know if a point is good for either of them, but it's not terrible, I guess. It's better than nothing. Um, it's better than nothing. Yeah, Pickford also, he, he sort of patted that Mavadidi cross, come shot onto the upright, almost uh, scored a comedy own goal. Uh, would you excuse him, if that had gone in, That uh, would you excuse him to Rick because there were hailstones the size of golf balls falling out of the sky on top of him? Um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I it's would. kind of an extenuating circumstance. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.